No matter your major, finding peer-reviewed journals is an important part of doing research at a college level. This video will introduce you to different databases for research in the social sciences. Learning how to research properly transcends disciplines. That means that no matter what keywords I use in my examples, you'll be able to apply the same workflows to your own research. No matter what class you're taking, the first place we need to go to is the library homepage. You can type in the address in your browser or do a Google search for UMass Dartmouth Library. Peer reviewed journals are located in our databases. No matter what subject you're majoring in, you should be able to find a database that applies to your discipline or use one that covers multiple disciplines. To get started, you can either click Search Subject Area Databases directly or Find Library Guides for Subjects and Courses. If you aren't sure which database to use, Clicking Find Library Guides for Subjects and Courses might be a good place to start. You'll see that we have lots of subjects, including all of the social sciences. If you click on one, you'll see one or more links to different research guides. Under Crime and Justice Studies, there's just a link to a single guide. If you click on it, you'll be redirected to a research guide that should help you find databases as well as books and other materials that can help in your research. To find appropriate databases for your research, click the Find Articles tab. Even though this is Crime and Justice Studies, every Social Sciences Guide will have a Find Articles tab. From here, you'll see a list of recommended databases. This is a great jumping off point if you're unsure about where to start. The Research Guide also has my contact information on the Welcome page. You can always email me to schedule an appointment if you need additional help. Back on the library homepage, you can also click Search Subject Area Databases directly to get to an alphabetical list of all of our databases. From here, on the left-hand side of the page under Specialized Resources, you can click Social Sciences to get a sense of the specific databases we have that contain articles across the social sciences disciplines. Every database title has an associated description that contains more information about the subjects and content located within each database. As you scroll through, read the descriptions and decide which database is most appropriate to the class you're taking or the research you're doing. I'm going to start on page two and scroll all the way down to Soch Index. You'll see that this offers coverage of all subdisciplines of sociology, including anthropology, criminal justice, political science, social work, and social psychology. This database is a great jumping off point to researching most disciplines within the social sciences, so let's give it a click. If you're off campus, you'll be asked to log in with your MyUMassD information. Once you're logged in, you'll see these three boxes at the top of your page where you can input your keywords and begin searching. You'll also see which database you're searching above the three boxes. Next to that, you'll see this Choose Databases link. If you click on it, you can see that you can actually add a whole bunch of other databases to search simultaneously with Social Index. This is really helpful considering the social sciences are extremely multidisciplinary. So if you're taking a political science class, you can also add political science complete. If you're in a women's and gender studies class, you can add women's studies international and so on. Once you're done adding all of the databases you want to search, click OK. If you click show all, you'll see every single database we're now searching at the same time. Once you've chosen your databases, you can begin the keyword searching process. In the description of this video, I'll link to more information about how to determine keywords for your specific research topics. Just know that you shouldn't really put sentences in the search boxes. Instead, try to narrow your topic down to the most important words. Let's say my research topic is about the role of social media in young women's body image and self-esteem. The first thing I want to do is make sure the databases I'm using are the most appropriate to my research topic. In this case, I'm going to click Choose Databases once more and add something called Communication Source. If you click this little speech bubble, you'll see a description to the database, and you can see it offers information about media studies and other relevant disciplines. This will help me find more information about social media specifically. I'll click OK again and put my keywords in. Take a look at how I've structured my search and compare it to the guide about beginning your research linked to in your My Courses. Once you've put all of your keywords in and you're comfortable with how your search is looking, click Search. 
With the keywords I've input, I have 169 results from Social Index, Political Science Complete, Women's Studies International, and Communication Source. Before I start reviewing the articles, I want to narrow my search results down so I'm seeing the most important, most relevant information. The first thing that I'm going to do is change this date newest sort to relevance. What this does is change the way the articles are displayed so that the ones that have the most mention of the keywords I input are listed first. The reason I'm doing this is because on the left hand side of the page, I can then limit to a date range. That means that even if I'm not seeing the newest articles first, I'm still making sure I've narrowed my results to the last 10 or 5 years. Depending on your search topic, you can choose how little or how much you want to narrow your dates down. You've probably heard your professor talk a lot about finding peer-reviewed journal articles. I've listed more information about what peer review is in your My Courses Library module, but what you need to know about your search results in the database is that under Refine Results, you can quickly limit to only peer-reviewed journals by clicking this box next to peer-reviewed. This is what makes databases different than searching a basic Google interface. You can now be assured that all 114 of these results are published in peer-reviewed journals. To quickly review, sorting by relevance, limiting by date range, and limiting to peer-reviewed are the three basic steps I take before I begin reviewing my search results. If you're interested in learning more about all the other ways you can narrow your search results down, have a look on the left side of the page and play around with all these limiters. Now that I've limited in a way that makes me comfortable, I can actually start reviewing the titles of the articles and determining which ones I think may be of use in my research. The things I look for when skimming my article results include the date of publication. I'm trying to find something current, right? I'm also looking to see how frequently my keywords are bolded in the article's description, especially where the subjects are. If I see a lot of my keywords in bold next to this subject section, I know that someone has determined that these are actually the most important aspects of the article. If enough of them align with my original keywords, then I can feel comfortable clicking on it and seeing if it's something I want to read. Let's take a look at number four, broadening the scope of social media effect research on body image concerns. When I click the title, I'm redirected to what's called a detailed record. A detailed record is exactly what it sounds like. It contains the most important information about the article in question, including the authors, the journal title, those subject terms I was looking at before, and an abstract. The thing about peer-reviewed journal articles is that they're not particularly easy to read and they can be quite long. An abstract is going to give you the most important concepts of the article quickly and in a more digestible form. If after reading the abstract, you decide you wanna read the article, you can click PDF full text on the left side of the page. Like I said, peer-reviewed journal articles are long. This one is 10 pages, but each page has two columns of text in it. That's why reading the abstract is so important and can help you do research more quickly and more easily. Most databases give you lots of options for how to keep an article if it's something you want to return to later. Of course, you can download it by clicking this arrow on the right side of the page. You can also print it. You can email it to yourself by clicking this envelope button. This is actually really useful because not only can you email yourself the full text of the article, but you can also email yourself a formatted citation. Just click the citation format bubble and select the citation format your professor wants you to use from the pull down menu. When you click send, you'll receive an email with the PDF full text of the article as well as the formatted citation that you can copy and paste into your bibliography or works cited. Other helpful things you can do include citing the article by clicking the Cite button. From here, you can just copy and paste the citation into your works cited or paper. Finally, you can view the permalink by clicking this little link button. The link at the top of the page won't always work. Instead, if you want to copy and paste a link and email it to yourself or someone else, make sure you find the permalink to the article. After reviewing the article and deciding if you want to read it, you can return to your result list. One feature that I want to mention before I move on to something else is the folder option. If you're in a hurry, you can quickly review the titles and information on your search results page. If you think it's something you want to read later, you can click this little file folder on the right side of the page. Do this as much as you want. When you're done, on the top right, you can click folder view. 
From here, you can select every article you've chosen and email it to yourself all at once. You may not always be able to immediately see linked full text or a PDF for the article you want to read. That's okay. If you decide you want to pursue an article but can't find the full text, you can click Find a Copy at UMass D Libraries. What this will do is try to find the article in any of our other databases. If we don't have it, don't worry. You can still request the article using Interlibrary Loan. If you don't see any links to other databases, but instead see Sign In to check if there are request options, go ahead and sign in using your My UMass D information. Once you're logged in, under How to Get It, you'll now see a link to Interlibrary Loan. From here, you'll be directed to an article request form. Often, the last page of the article does not copy over from the citation. Return to your detailed record and find the last page. Copy and paste it into your article request. Review everything else, and if it looks good, click Submit Request. Interlibrary loan requests go out to a bunch of different libraries that may have access to articles we don't have. Once the article is located, you'll be emailed a copy of the PDF. This process is free and unlimited and a great way to find articles that we don't have full text access to. Sometimes if you're using Google Scholar, you'll find what you think is the perfect article, click on it, and see a charge of anywhere from $30 to over $100 for one view. You should never ever feel obligated to pay for an article. Instead, check and see if we have it at the library, and if we don't, you can always fill out an interlibrary loan request. Despite the length of this tutorial, and how confusing it might seem, research really is all about the keywords you input and how you narrow your search results down. The most important thing you want to do is make sure you're looking at peer-reviewed journals. No matter which database you choose, the type of keyword searching you do will stay the same. The same goes for the type of class you're taking. Whether it's political science or biology, the techniques remain the same. What's most important is that you know you can always ask a librarian for help. I'm the social sciences librarian, so no matter what class you're taking within those disciplines, you can reach out to me and make an appointment via Zoom, or just ask me a quick question I can respond to via email. My contact information is in my courses, but you can also find it on the library homepage by scrolling down and clicking Librarian Subject Liaisons. From there, find the subject of the class you're taking, click it, and my name will pop up. Just click Send Email, fill out the form, and I'll respond as quickly as I can, usually between Monday and Friday from about 9 to about 5. Have a look at the other resources in your My Courses module and attempt some keyword searching on your own. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Good luck, and please let me know if you need any help or have any questions.